part of them. And uh, I'm not sure if you saw a job posting at MITT about they are hiring a front end uh, instructor. Okay, John moving to another position inside the MITT and now uh, they are looking for a new instructor actually. So um, like, I think you guys are pretty lucky that uh, you got to know John and to study with him. Like he's, he's a very unique teacher and we are trying to hire a very good person, but I don't think, especially in the first year, he will be as good as John. So anyways, um, yesterday we uh, took this question, create a page to add a new item to an existing order. So uh, I saw a few submissions um, we discussed or they were sent me uh, to me to Slack, but I wasn't able to reply yesterday. Sorry for that. Uh, but uh, most of the code was good. Okay. So what we will do, uh, we'll see this question. We'll try to see at least one sample solution and then I'll try to solve it. Okay. And we can somehow do it together and do it uh, here uh, on my machine. Okay, so for this one, uh, I'm pretty sure most of you finished it already. So can we see a sample solution? Okay, even if it's not totally working, that's fine. We can see why it's not working. So where are our regular customers? I can't see anyone with an open camera like Millie, Saria, Saria isn't here, oh, okay. Usually Saria and Mini are the only ones who are kind enough to show me their faces, so I won't be speaking to a black screen. Hey, hey Willie, how are you? Okay, so Willie, do you want to start today? Everything okay. Ah, well, uh, I, I did it, so <clears throat> I tried, but uh, I, I can show you what I have. Let me <coughs> okay, let's see what you have. Like we we, we are not telling uh, for perfection now. Uh, okay, let's I see started you... working with that only a few minutes ago, so uh, no, that's from yesterday. Yeah, that's from yesterday. yesterday. Oh, you started a few minutes ago. Yeah. Yeah, because I have so many issues though that let me show you. Okay. Yeah, I, it happens. Okay. <sighs> Yeah, for the moment I only have this one. So, because I I confused with the view back from from moment, so I have the. I display the the order in the using a draw list, so I can select one one out order. And then I can display only the the item for each order. So now I'm going I'm going to work with uh, modifying or each. Okay, so we want to select the order and <clears throat> to select the item we want to add. So we want two yeah. drop down lists. So okay. now I need to put a, a drop down list here. Yeah. So I, I'm not know, I'm not sure if I need to create another page or I no, can no, do no, it. No, it's, it's the same page. page. So in the same page, you have HTML dot drop down list. Okay. okay another mean, one. Yeah, another one here. for items. Okay, I got it. So I have another question. Okay. The issue is that now I'm using this model, right? But I'm trying to to use here the view back completed. I mean I tried I try to 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 do that, like, uh, um, okay, but it doesn't work like that. <clears throat> no, it it won't work like this. So here, what what are you adding? Like, uh, what are you showing? Like, want to list of item for this order? So you need to be sending a list of items. <clears throat> or order items. So what are you sending to this page? 
I'm you, sending you, the item, the order item list. Yeah, okay, so because you will be sending the, an the order item to, list. Yeah, because I have the quantity in this table. So as mm -hmm. I have this the, the quantity in this table, I need to use it. But I'm not sure how mm -hmm. I can display the name okay. because as we are using M uh, MBC, so it's complicated for me use the code here in the view part. So because I need the name of the item, so. Okay, so let, let me, let, let, let's, uh, let's do this one together, okay? Let me do this one and then we can uh, uh, see the rest, okay? So for this one, let's share the screen, okay? So you, you have part of it, right? Um, the ones I saw on Slack also uh, were uh, almost right. So it's just a matter of what do you want to see when you get the page and want to, what do you want to post when you post the page, okay? So here we want uh, this thing. Let's try to add it in the order page, for example, okay? So what do I want here is So this is an action result, it's called add items to order. Okay, that's that's the question from Mr. T. Okay, so what do you want to see when you get the page? You want to see a list of orders. Okay, hey, can you tell me which order and then what are the items? Okay, so I want to see view bag dot what uh, order ID, let's say, equals new select list to show you all the orders. So db.orders without filtration. Okay, I want, I'm interested in the ID one and I want to show the name, okay, as a text. Okay, the, the second list I want to uh, show view bag dot item ID, okay equals new also select list so db dot items and this one also submit the id and show the name okay that's nice uh, then i want to show the page so here i am not returning anything to this page in the get part i'm just showing the customer, hey, those are the two things, select from them, okay? I'm not sending a particular order or a particular item, okay? Just like yesterday. Okay, now when uh, it Mohammed, comes- Mohammed, I'm oh. sorry, you told me to add the quantity of the item. Uh, the yeah, list but the quantity is not a list, so we don't need to add it here. It's yeah, not a but list, but in like an edit for, uh, or like edit- Yeah, we can have that edit use... in the- in the view so, so it's, it's just not a list so just add it without the select list yeah so if you want a list of stuff that's something you need to add here oh. in the code yeah, and okay. then show it then make a drop down list for it in the um, um, in the view oh. but if you just want a number okay like okay enter the number of this thing or the word or like a simple thing, which is not a list, that's not something you needed in the get. So mm -hmm. like in the get, in the page, in the view part of the get, we will write the quantity, but you don't okay. need to write it here because the quantity is just an empty text box to enter the number, right? It's not, okay. it's not coming from the database while the orders are coming from where? Sorry. From the database. Items are coming from database. So the view, can't show them for you. The controller should bring them from the database and show them uh, and send them to the view. Okay, we'll, we'll see how it, it will be uh, done and we will talk Sorry. about it again. Moment. Be Sorry, because the quantity in our case is inside in the order item table. So okay. it's, it's, a, it's an attribute that we have storage in our, in our database. 
So maybe it's a good idea to show to show them to the user that uh, the quantity that have this specific order. So yeah, well that, that but that would be another question here. Like we are just like this page is just a simple page to add to an order item, regardless of like what like uh, what was the quantity before or what was anything like this one will just show you order item and okay how much do you want more okay it it's not concerned about how was there or like if there were any okay if what you are talking about really is like more a bit of like more a real life example like real one here we just want to keep it simple so I want to show the user, I want to show him two lists and the quantity, okay? Now, the two lists, they need to come from the controller and send them to the view, while the quantity is just a place to write a number. So this can be done in the view directly. I don't need to bring it in the controller, okay? So. Uh, Mohammed, sorry. Yeah. The, uh, for view bag order ID, uh, the last, uh, oh, uh, field name is ah. it correct because uh, we don't have yeah so it is order number order yeah. number yeah uh, i called it order number right yeah, yeah. order yeah. number well we we will have uh, an error about this it will complain so but let me double check yeah sorry i thought we called it number uh, name but it's order num right okay. yeah it's an over order number Okay, let's see. Uh, order. Yeah, order number. Okay, can change it. Uh, it. It was going to complain anyways. Yeah, yeah, thanks for the fix. Okay. <clears throat> so now let's go to the action result. Same name, add items to order. Okay, so when you post, what are you going to be sending? Like when, when you will post the page? You will be An posting, ID. you will be posting the ID of the order you want to add. You will be posting the ID of the item you are adding to the order. And you will also be sending the quantity of that item, right? That's, that's, what, that's what your code needs to perform the task, right? So can you can you do this uh, can you do this task without knowing the item ID? No. Can you know, can you know it, can you do it without knowing the order ID? No. Can you do it without knowing the quantity? Also no. Okay. Unless you want to assume that it's like uh, only one, for example, then that's like maybe a more even more simple case. Okay. So you want the order ID. You want the item ID to perform this task and you want the quantity, right? You want all of those. Okay. <clears throat> now uh, we need to add this item to this order with this quantity, okay? But we said, what if it's already there? Okay, so after, after checking that the order ID is there, and after checking the item is there. So var order equals uh, db dot orders dot find order ID. Okay. Var item equals db dot items dot. So here I'm just making sure they are still in the database. And no one deleted them. Okay. So if order is not null and item isn't null, okay, here I will do my job. Okay, if both are still there. Okay, so first thing I need to check like, is this a brand new addition? Okay, like my order, is this the first time I'm adding visa or? Uh, um, like, um, is it already there and I'm just increasing the quantity? Okay, so here, check if this order 
already has this item. Okay, like if you order a Saria, you already ordered a Big Mac. Okay, how do I know that? Okay, so I need a query. Okay, so var, for example, um, let's call it order item equals db dot. How how do I find? How do I find if there's any in here? So we have like a million ways. We can use where, we can use first of default, we can use any, okay? But if it's there, then I need the object itself, right? So it's better not to use any. What, what's the return of any? Boolean. Boolean. So any will just tell you, hey, it's there. So you need another query to bring the order item itself. So how about I use first or default, okay? So in case it's already there, okay, give it to me. Okay, I, I want it back because I want to increase the quantity of this person, of this order item. Okay, so check if this order already has this item. So, okay, look if, <coughs> let's um, call it- I'm sorry, shouldn't we, shouldn't we use, instead of DB, shouldn't we use the order for the order items? We want the specific um, orders, order items, right? Yeah, that, that's good too. So let's say order dot order items. Yeah, that, this will narrow down the, the scope actually. Order dot order items dot first or default. Uh, what? Okay, here let's say O I order item. That's a terrible name, O I. It looks like uh, looks some hieroglyphic stuff. Okay, O I dot what the item ID item. equals the item ID I have and or, or or you can use those objects okay you can use those objects or you can use those parameters both will lead to the same thing okay oi dot order ID um, no actually we are in the order itself right okay so we don't need to check the order ID right like I'm starting from the order itself. So all what I need to check is, okay, does this order items have this item? Okay, so so like here, I'm, I'm just thinking with you, okay? So you may see me like erasing, okay? It's not that I memorized this thing, okay? So if you saw anything that doesn't make sense, just stop me right away. Okay, so here I'm looking if there's already this item. Okay, now I have two cases, okay? case if it's already there or not, okay? So if order item is not null, that means it's already there. Okay, so what should you do here? Okay, so if yes, then just increase the quantity. Okay, so if, if there is just increase the number, right? Otherwise you need to add it. So if, if it's there, then order item dot quantity equals plus this quantity, right? If it's there. Otherwise add this item to the list of items for this order, right? Like then uh, in your order is the first time you are requesting a pizza or a Big Mac or whatever, okay? You didn't request it before. So what should I create here? I need to create a new object of order items and add it to the list of that order, okay? <clears throat> so I need to do something like order item. So there are many ways to do it, okay? But you can start with a new one. Uh, no, this one, yeah, order item, let's call it new item equals new order item. Okay, so what do you need for the, an order item? New item dot 
item ID equals the item ID in the parameter, right? New item dot order ID equals what? The order ID in the parameter. I'm just creating a new one. And new item dot quantity equals what? The quantity in the parameter, okay? But need to be inside the else, right? Sorry, I wrote the otherwise and I thought this is the code. Okay. See? Yeah, so I, I really like that everyone is focused with me here. Okay, so just imagine we are doing pair programming and we are do, doing the work together. Okay, so I have this case or this case. Okay, and of course I need to add it. So db dot order items dot add the new item okay uh, i guess calling it new item is misleading i think i need to call it new item for this order okay because it's not an item for the restaurant it's an item for for this order okay so let me just change the name here okay okay so after I do that, like either this, either quantity increase or a brand new order item, what should I do? I need to save the changes. Okay, what if the order is null or item is null, like someone deleted them while you are working? Okay, so here like just, uh, and of course this return a view that takes uh, what takes, uh, order dot. So, what do you want to show there? Let's show a list of order items. Okay, or order items of that, of that order. Okay, just like what Willie uh, did. You like after you perform the task, you can show whatever you want to the user. Okay. Uh, otherwise, return the thing that I hate memorizing. New HTTP status. Yeah, otherwise, like someone deleted those while you are adding them. Okay, if, if the order is null or the item is not even there anymore, okay, just return this bad request or uh, redirect the user to some kind of, hey, there's something bad happened. And like, okay, someone deleted the whole order. Your order was totally deleted or whatever. Okay, so. That's exactly what uh, we want to do, okay? So we are adding things to an order, okay? Like, it's like you are calling back, you are saying, hey, can I add a Big Mac? Oh, yeah, sure, I will add it to you. How many do you want? To? So regardless of what you have already, okay? Regardless of what you have already, you are adding, okay? It's not you are updating, you are adding. So if the order is already there, then just increase the quantity. If this item is not in the order list yet, then you need to create it and store it. Okay, that's the code part. Now we need to create the uh, view part. So let's go to orders, orders, and uh, view, and add items to order. So we said this one eventually will show you a list of all the items in this order. Okay, so what's happening here? Okay, so it will take a list of order item. Why do I have those? Okay, so as usual, we have the submit part, the one that you see when you get the page, and the one that you see when you submit the page. Okay, so the one that you see when you get the page is, is a form, okay? So it will be at using html.begin form, okay? So what do you want to show here? You want to show like um, select uh, um, order, and then you will show at HTML 
dot a drop down list for what did we call it? We called it order ID, right? In the view back. Okay. Next one, we said select item. Uh, you will display a drop down list that is populated with the items. Okay. Now it's time to let the user select the quantity. Enter one TT. Okay. So here I just want where a place to let the user enter. So I, I don't need to have this in the get function in the controller. Yeah, I just want to let the user enter. HTML dot uh, there's something called text box, I guess. Or we can like you can use editor, editor four, we can use text, text box four. Let's try this one, see if it's worked. Like it's been a while since I chose this one. Okay. If it didn't work, we will try to fix it. Okay, but I like to use different things. So you can see like there are different stuff, not always the same thing. Okay. The last thing we need is as usual. Uh, what do we call it? Input. Type equals submit value equals add. Okay, since we are adding. Okay, that's what the user is going to see. Okay, now uh, let's say if now we are in the post part where I added and finished, I'm, I'm and I'm back to this page. So if the model is not null, I will uh, see something like uh, H1 list of all items in this order. Okay, something like that. And here I will have an ordered list where I show all the current items in the order. Okay, for var, order item in the model. Okay, so I'm not sure if that was you, what was uh, you asking about, uh, Willie? Okay, so this will happen after you add, after you submit, okay? After you submit, now you, you can choose what to show the user. Maybe you don't want to show the user anything, maybe just a message. Um, like it was successful, okay, now that was added. Maybe you don't want even to show um, a for each or anything, yeah. okay? But it depends case, on... Yeah. So in my case, I was trying to to get all the items for one order and then modify those items, adding or increase their, yeah. their quantity, modify but this is another thing. Yeah, this is another uh, no. approach. No, we are not modifying, we are just adding yeah. Yeah, extra things, yeah. Yeah, so I know like um, I, I'm trying to make them simple. Maybe you are trying to make them realistic. So sometimes we are not on uh, like totally the same page, but all what we care about is trying to write some code. We are, we are not really building a restaurant here. Okay, so for, for each one, um, you can just show, uh, so this is order item. So order item dot, Item its name quantity of at order item dot okay so just show something for the user okay so uh, First, any question about what we did here? Um, yeah, in your controller, you declared um, item, like you made uh, a little item, but like, where do you use it? Um, are you talking about get or post? Uh, post. Oh, the, yeah, before your question, yeah, there's something missing. 
Like in the post, there's something missing. You back. Yeah, the two lists. Okay, those are missing actually. Okay, so uh, you were asking, sorry, Jennifer, asking about what? Um, you made the variable item. Where do you use that? Item ID? No, um, in the, the post. Uh, yeah. Where did I use it? I just want to make sure it's not none. Oh, okay. And yeah. also you can, you can use it in the condition, but I decided to use the number in the input. Okay. But, so we, but okay. I just used it to make sure it's like someone deleted the item from our menu for some reason. Okay, but we could have used it like in the else. Yeah. So here like OI or dot item ID equals, instead of using this guy, you can say item dot ID. Okay, that makes sense. Because they are the same thing. Okay. Okay, uh, let's see how it looks like or if there are any problems. Okay, let's copy the name of this one or maybe you can just start while we are in, in here. Okay, so that's what we see when we get the page. So it's telling you, hey, choose the order. Like I want the order number two. I am want to add like the caller is asking for two more small pieces and click. And now that order actually had nothing. So now small visa of two. Now let's say like we are adding a Big Mac. So he wants three Big Macs add. Okay, now the big challenge. Uh, let's say that they called again and they want a, an extra Big Mac. Okay. So you will see that Big Mac quantity of four, like you don't have another line for Big Mac. The quantity was updated instead of adding another line for same order, same item. Why? Yeah, it does make sense, right? And that's exactly what we wanted to do. Okay. So I'll give you a minute or two, just so you can, if you are um, working with me. So I will try to show you both. Uh, we have so many things in here. Okay. So this is the one and this is the post. Okay, the get is nothing but those two. Okay, try to make a comparison. And then we will start with calculating the total cost.
Okay, so hopefully is is getting easier. Uh, like one example after the other. Okay, let's take some risks from post and try to calculate our total cost for an order. Okay, so you know orders has so many items. There are quantities. Okay, so uh, first, anyone? Anyone tried? Wants to show us now. It, uh, total total cost will we will start with a simple version, but it will become more interesting. We will have discounts, so you can calculate the discounts. We will also have something about shipping. So if it's for pickup or for delivery, for example, maybe you will charge like extra ten percent. So we will make total cost more interesting. Uh, so at ten thirty we took those questions, and that was the first one. So. Anyone? Like I, I'm pretty sure most of you know. Like, why are you shy to? Because I, I could try. Oh, sorry. You didn't try. Or. My, mine's a hundred percent wrong. <laughs> like a hundred percent wrong. Yeah. Let's let's see what do you have. Yeah. So so you don't you you don't need to use link purely. Like ju just a calculation. So you need to iterate over all the order item, right? And then multiply it by the quantity, right? Wh where's the price of an item? In item. Yeah. So using the price in item and so you first brought the order, okay? Then for each product in items, order dot item dot price. Why why are you? Um, I told you. Well, something. actually, just 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 to revert those two. So why are you changing the price of the item? We want to change the total cost, right? So, okay. So this. Yeah. So this equals the first thing you had. Yeah, and so this is a price if you are selling one unit from everything, okay? So how would you um, make it if like, you know, it's not only the price for one item, it's the price for item multiplied by quantity. You know, like price of a Big Mac, but you ordered four, uh, or not you, like you don't eat four Big Macs, you eat one, okay? But someone ordered four, Okay, so multiply it by what? Quantity. Yeah, yeah. Just like, it's the only number we have in the whole table. Like, that, that's the, like, you don't even need to think about it. Like, we don't have any other option. Yeah, why do I look so red? Like, it's the reflect of, like, I, this is not how I look like, okay? And I am an Arab. Like, I'm not from here. So that's Wait, like, um, that's wrong. That's gotta be wrong. Yeah. That's uh, no, yeah. just, yeah. Yeah. Price multiplied by order dot quant, uh, order dot, um, uh, yeah. Order dot quantity. Yeah. Just, mul mu just multiply the price. So after the price, just write the star. Yeah. And that's it. So what what did we do here? Like we we have the price of one item, okay? Multiply by the quantity. So one Big Mac multiplied by four. So like forty dollars, and you keep adding to the total cost, okay? But what should you do at the end? At the end, you should just call DB dot save changes before the return, okay? Before you return. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So before you uh, before you return. So this function doesn't even need to be a page. It's just a function that we use in pages. Okay. Uh, we don't we don't need to make it a page. We can use it. Uh, you know, uh, we will create a page like a receipt page where you see everything. So we can call this function. So you can just make it public instead of public action result. You can make it public uh, double. Okay, 
and you can return yeah you can return uh you can return order dodge total cost uh wait a minute in line 138 why do you have product dot order dot order dot mm. you know first you have a problem with your naming jennifer so in the first line 130 134 what what are you getting here the yeah yeah so you are trying to get an order right yeah so why are you using db.order items you should use db.order yeah that, that's the first thing okay so now you have an order okay so for each product in order yeah, so why why you have order dot order dot items? Yeah, you don't need this second order where there's a red red line. No, where there's a red line. Y you were using the wrong table. Okay. Okay, so now okay. Product dot order dot item dot price. You should have something called or uh, item. Um, okay, uh, sorry, this should be product, product dot item dot price. Yeah, product. Yeah, your, your naming is very misleading, Jennifer. So what, what, what is the product here? Like, we don't even have products. So you really should choose a name that uh, represents exactly what you are talking about. So <laughs> <clears throat> in, in the for each, let's let's look at the for each. So what do you have in the for each? You are saying for each something in what order dot order items, right? So why did you call it product? Call it order item. Okay, why 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 you need to call it product? Okay, it's it's a list of order items. So each one of them is one order item, right? Yeah. Okay. See now it looks so easy to read now. Now at the end, at the end, order item dot quantity. Okay, wh where's the quantity is in order item. So I return order item dot order dot total cost. Sorry, order item dot total cost. Yeah, where, where's the total cost? It's no, it's inside order item dot order. Yeah, so dot order. Yeah, just dot order dot oh no um here we are outside the for each sorry uh so just return uh, order dot total cost okay so um like uh, yeah it's a double question mark so your function should be public double question mark yeah, in, in the double, no, in the double, in the double, you need a question mark. <clears throat> okay, so, like, um, like you, you can do it, Jennifer. I'm, I'm pretty sure, like everyone else can do, but, um, like you just need to think very slowly. I, I, I get the feeling that, um, many of you, not, not only you, they, they get scared for some reason, so they just start typing whatever they can. Okay, order items. Okay, let's put few items here few order items there while it's all what all what it takes to uh, to do it is just to think very slowly and either write it on a white paper or imagine it that that's all what it takes okay <clears throat> so let's try to do it together yeah thank you very much jennifer so uh, what we want to do is i want a function that calculates the total cost okay and give me the total cost. So maybe in another page, I can save it. I can do a page for that. I, I, I can use this function in multiple shapes. So let me just create that function. Okay. So it's called public. It returns a double. Okay. A double question mark because it could be null. That's according to our database. Do you remember the total cost? So double question mark. Um, um, like get total cost or or 
calculate total cost. Okay, this is for calculation. And to calculate the total cost for an I for an, I, an order, I need to know the ID of that order. Okay, so first thing I need to do is to bring this order and to make sure it's in the database. Let's call it ID. So if the order isn't null, okay, what should I do here if the order is it null? I need to go over the list. So var, let's call it result, equals, we start from zero. Okay, so then for each what, for each var order item in what, in, this order dot order items, okay? What should I do here? Result equals or plus equals what? This order item dot the item in it, the price of it, multiply it by how many pieces, how many units you order from this thing, from, from small pizza or from Big Mac dot quantity. And that's it. Uh, this should be double, sorry. Okay. And eventually, after I finish the for each, I will return the result. Okay. Otherwise, like here, I will return null. Okay. Like uh, you, you didn't give me a correct ID. So I will return null or I can throw an exception. So the, the question mark is for that allow you to return null, right? Yeah, the question mark means it can be a double or null. Okay, this is um, the dot network. Okay, so like, Dead time question mark. That means it can be a dead time or nothing. Because uh, double double in by default doubles they can't be null. Okay, they are not nullable. They need to be zero, one, something. Okay, they can't be null, and their default value is zero, zero point zero. <clears throat> so if you want to make them null, you need to use the question mark. It's now it's another time. Okay, so here I, I would prefer to throw an exception because you are sending me an ID of the wrong thing. So I'd say throwing an exception so the caller can know for sure that they made a problem or you can like return null. Some people do this, some people do this. Okay, so this is a function ready to give me the, the, the total cost. Now I can use it anywhere, okay? Uh, where to use it is a different story. So maybe I can create a page for that we will create a page where I see the final order, like all the items, all the quantities, and then like, hey, that's your total cost uh, before discount. That's your total cost after discount. And it's like a receipt, okay? So next question was, what was next question? Create a page where you select an item from a list of items and return the total number of orders. Okay. So for example, um, we want sorry, to know, moment. okay. Uh, sorry? Yeah, I have, an, I have a question. Sure. But the question is about the previous one, the previous uh, okay. exercise. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, what's the question? I mean, in the in the adding item to a, to a new to an order. Okay, this one. Okay, in this one, yeah, in the line. Uh, let me check. Yeah, in the line one sixty four. Mm -hmm. In this line, I have the order dot order items. So I can access to ordering item because the table are re related? Yeah, because inside order, inside order object, 
in the code, you have a list of order items. Now, now this is not in the database. So maybe you are asking how it's done since it's not in the database. Oh yeah, the, the, the issue is that I I I don't figure out very well the Q lane because I was thinking about using uh, SQL. So yeah, sometimes yeah. I have a problem, yeah, I got but you now, now, yeah. now I got it. So yeah. So in, in SQL you can do that because in SQL, as you can see, there are no lists. Like inside yeah. order, inside order table, there's no list of order items, right? So you can do that in SQL. But what we are using here, we are using something called ORM, Object Relational Mapping. So ORM, which is in .NET, is called Entity Framework, will translate our code. It will translate this code with the list. It will translate it to SQL that the database can understand. But you as a programmer, you, you don't see this detail. You, you are working with a, with a database as if it was just classes. This is the beauty of ORMs in general. So now, like, you know, you have tables of orders, items, you have the relations. But for me, I am dealing with them as just classes here. See those classes? Oh, okay, see, in the, okay. In the, in the order, you have a list of what order items. So, so you can say, order dot order items so, which is a feature in the code but not in the database okay so QLink as technology allow me to using sql as language but they allow me that i can use um i can use uh, as normal class too yeah well what's allowing you to use it as classes is the entity framework the or okay the ORM will convert the tables to objects and classes. Okay, but I okay. can use I can use SQL too. Yes, in the same you code. can use that. So you we will use it in the next not next one after the break. So you can uh, send a raw X SQL command to your database from here from your code. Okay, so but this, you this can is the same framework. Dot database dot SQL. And here you send the SQL. Okay, you okay. send your SQL like you know, select star from something. Yeah. So, but this is like if you want direct thing, or if you are calling a stored procedure. Uh, this is if you want to bypass the entity framework and you want to bypass the objects and classes and send. So if if Directly. that's all what you want to do, it's better not to use an ORM from the beginning. Just use plain SQL. All, all the way. But okay. uh, uh, um, what is the most common things for this? Well, uh, ORMs are getting more more popular. But if you have a big database with so many hundreds of tables, ORM will become very slow, like entity framework. So they will use stored procedures this way, and they will call the database directly. So entity framework is excellent, very good, and ORMs in general. But they are not very good when you have a big database. When yeah, you have the, a big database, it's better not to use them. The yeah. issue is that as the, the, that is my first time that I see this kind of technology as QLane, because yep. uh, most of the well, all of the software or, or system that I that, that yeah. I have in my company, so never, yeah, they use SQL right use, away. Yeah, because we managing a lot of well. They manage a lot of uh, data, so they use more pure, uh, more pure SQL. Yeah. yeah. If you want something similar in Java, if you are interested, uh, search for Hibernate. So Hibernate think... is uh, is like uh, is like Entity Framework. It's also oh, an ORM. Exactly. <clears throat> it's also an ORM. Uh, it deals. It converts to classes. It works with Bocos. They say. <sighs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So here you can like forget about database totally. Like say order dot items, order dot order items. Okay, it's like you forgot about the whole existence of a database. Yeah, I got it. Okay, yeah. So next question, any volunteers? We want to know. I hey, can't hey. fix it. Help me. Oh, can't fix it. I, I thought you said, hey, I did it and it's working. I did it. It's not working. <laughs> Okay, that, that's halfway through. Okay, let's see what you have. So this one, like I will say, okay, choose an item. So you will tell me, okay, I choose Big Mac. 
And then I will show you how many orders people ordered Big Mac in, in how many orders. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, select item, it's called, that's not a very nice name. Like select item for what? Okay, so. Wasn't it supposed need... to be like a drop down list of all the items and choose one and to get how many of them are? Yeah, like uh, then it will tell you how many orders this item showed in. Uh, so more specific, like what, what should be? Yeah, so it's be, it should be like uh, number of orders for item. Okay. Uh... Okay, so I, I choose the item, then you mm -hmm. will show me how many orders this item was uh, like in. Okay, so you will tell me, hey, Big Mac was ordered in 300 orders mm -hmm. or 200 orders, regardless of how many, how, how many the quantity, quantity. was. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see. So the first one, you will choose an item. Okay, that's nice. And you won't show anything. Okay, so in the post, you are finding the item. Hey, uh, first in the post, what did we say about the parameter name? So the parameter name in the post. Ah, not just should, an ID, but it it should uh, match to the view back. Item, view back. Yeah. So item. Oh ID. shit! <laughs> uh, like it took we me like children. two hours. Ah. Oh. Will Willie's children and Billy's children are listening. I'm so sorry, guys. It's, be you glad that something. I didn't use the F word, though. <laughs> oh that, my God. that would be terrible. I use it a lot, but not in Zoom. Okay, so you are finding the item, then if it's not there, okay. Okay, so, um, okay, you have the item ID, but what is this one? So wh where's the query? So what we need, we need a query to know mm -hmm. how many how many orders this item showed in. Oh, you want all them to be done. Yeah, in so here. That, that's what I, I want. That's what I want to return. I okay. went here and did that. <laughs> um, yeah, so you are just showing like you are selecting item, then you are showing me the name of that item. Um, uh, what is count model dot count? What, what is this count? Where? The count of the all the order items where okay. inside this item that matches that thing. Oh yeah, you know what? Yeah, I I think you are doing uh, okay here, but you don't need to send the whole list. You just want yeah, to send just a, a number. number, right? So just <laughs> send a number <clears throat> and show it. You you don't need a for each here. Yeah. Like all what mm -hmm. I am interested in is I want to select pizza and then see hey two hundred orders. Right. Okay. So um. Let, let's fix the code first. Okay. So what what are you going to send uh, in the number. return view? In the return view, uh, I, instead of to list, oh. instead of to list, you need to send what? See, you, you are just sending a number, and yeah, that that's. Do I need to change into to list? No, you don't need a to list. You are you are no longer sending a list. Yeah, okay. count count will do the job. Uh, okay, and um, let's go to, yeah, yeah, you can, oh, yeah. you can put the number in the view back, but, uh, and, and maybe you, you don't need to send anything, so you can just put mm. it in the view back and return a view and empty. Let's view. try that. Okay. No, I want to see, <laughs> sorry, sorry, <Nikki>. oh. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. then you mean the model what should be the model yeah it will be uh, i think uh, system dot integer or int just use int so at model int uh, if it's not I, working i tried i tried that i could so yeah I so you need the maybe system dot int or we, we can look up where is where is integer okay so let's try this out yeah, uh, Saria is making us dizzy. Like she just like changed. Yeah. Everything. I'm following <laughs> the mouse pointer and I'm really getting like, want to throw up here. She's <laughs> getting seasick. Okay, so we go to the view now, right? I don't know. 
<laughs> Where are you now? I, I I lost what what are you doing? It's now? not that anymore. Do I say? Yeah. So at model, even... uh, did you try just mm. int? It didn't work. I didn't do anything before. I tried yeah. with int and with int thirty two. I couldn't. So okay. I yeah, use... but I remember it Would... was working. Um, no, it like no that that won't work because okay. integer is in .NET framework. It's not in your project. Integer, oh, is, integer is a class that is inside the framework. It's not oh. a class that you created. So just just you int, it should be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so then uh, you don't need at this model here. You can just show a view back. Right. Like after view after back? the after the form you. Uh, where okay. um, okay. Uh, you want to send the int in view bag or in the mm. view? Um, Millie wanted to see it done without the view bag, so I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So you still need this if model is not null. Okay. Or um. Uh, this or let, let's yeah just show model so just show the model add model no it's it's not in Wait, a view I bag. have you said it's not in a, a name bag. I have a name <laughs> I don't ah you you want to show the name okay mm. <laughs> uh, uh this model times right mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's see. They, there could be like some null issues or something. We can fix it. Easy. Oh yeah. Taking too long doesn't yeah, take fine. Uh, sometimes it connects to the database after they lose the connection, so it's ah. to warm up. Uh, the model, oh, yeah, you need to pass an ID up. So, no, wait, I you, just need the list. Oh, yeah, show. so no, <clears throat> in the view, in the view, you need if model is not null. So I'm in sorry? the view, yeah, in the in the view code here before the H three, you uh -huh. need if model is not null. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's telling you like I'm trying to show you this model, but the model is null. Yeah, and it's uh, it's good to uh, like here. Wait, this is an int, just an integer, right? Yeah, so, so maybe we can send like int question mark. Mm. Yeah, they'll, uh, this is getting so. So we need to make it like nullable, the int. So I guess uh, I'm. I'm thinking if it's better to send it in a view back in this way. Like it's okay. it's just a number. So the issue is we are saying an integer, it won't be null. Mm -hmm. But it's complaining that um, like here here it's always be true because integers can't be true. No. Would it you, work? You can delete the first line, the first line, and the the first uh, line. Yeah, delete. All right. And uh, 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 16, uh, not equal, uh -huh. no. Okay. I'm not sending anything, but it's still really. Yeah, you are model. still sending. You are still sending, oh. but you are not saying what you are sending. Oh. So now you can't. Now you can't have autocomplete. For example, if you are sending a list, now you won't have autocomplete. But uh, let's see if that was, works. Mm, yeah. Okay. 
thought it was necessary. I remember I tried it very long time ago, but I really don't remember if it works. Let's see. So if it's just a matter of number, I guess sending it in a view bank would be sufficient. Yeah, it's, it's just a number. You are not sending anything special. Ah. Uh. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank okay. you. So it's working. Well, when do you don't put anything in the in the model? Yeah. So here oh. you are just not like you are sending a raw thing. You are like you you will lose the autocomplete. For example, see this list. When I say model dot, I will get quantity. I will get name. Uh, if you don't say what is it, you you won't have that autocomplete and in Pilsons. Okay, so you need to like just write in like you are writing in a text document or something. But when you say what it is, you will get that uh, in Pilsons thing. Okay, so uh, let's try to write it quickly. Uh, where are we now? Order so. Now we are working with items, okay? Okay, let me share first. Okay, so we want something like public action result. Uh, num of orders for an item, okay? So the first thing we need to do is a select list for the items. Okay. And then we want to return a view. Let's try doing uh, it with only a view bank. Let's see if it works without uh, any model. Okay, then this will be HTTP post. And it will be also an action result, same name for item. So here I will be sending the ID of the item I want to query. Okay. So far item equals db dot items dot find this guy. Okay, I will skip the if null. Okay, you know that it's it should be here. Okay, the if it's null and if it's not null. Okay, but you know that it uh, it's required by now. Okay, so uh, so what I want to return view bag dot uh, let's call it result equals item dot order items that count and also I'll do what uh, sorry I did item name equals item dot name okay and let's return a view without anything to see if it, this works okay so in the item I want this page Add, okay, number of orders for item, okay. So I have this thing which is to select. Let me just delete those guys, okay. So all what I need here, just the drop down list for, um, sorry. So I just want the drop down list for the item. Okay, that's all what I need. And then here I can let me just show it view bag dot item uh, name. Uh, at view bag 
dot um, I called it result, right? Okay. Let's see how this goes. So I know ViewBank won't complain uh, if you don't have anything in the ViewBank. Okay, select item, Big Mac. Uh, okay. Don't oh. have yeah, I need the select list in the uh, post as well. Doesn't matter how many times I do this, I will always forget about it. Yeah, because it, it, it doesn't make sense. Like, why yeah, would you need why? it here? Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a million dollars question. Yeah, maybe because after the post, you can also select, so. Yeah, so Big Mac was ordered two times. Small pizza was ordered one time. Okay, you can add a model, you can check for nulls. Okay, you, you can do whatever you want. Okay, too many different ways to achieve the same thing, okay? Okay, now, next question. You want a break? It's been almost an hour and a half. Do you need a break? How many questions do we still? Yeah, I'm going to if I agree. Um, okay. Okay. This, this is a nice one. Change the customer class to add the property is loyal. Yeah. No loyal customers. A loyal customer is a customer who, uh, with more than three orders. But we have the previous before that one, which we are not called. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this one. Create a page where you select an item and a month number. Then show the number of units sold from this item during this month. Oh, this is a very hard one. I don't know. Anyone did it? Like it's, it's very similar to the one that we did, but with a condition. So you need to select an item and also select a month number. Okay, like just numbers. Okay, so then instead of returning a whole list, the, the whole count, see what we did here. We returned the whole count, right? But now I want just to uh, return the count and also filter for only that number. So where's the date of the order stored usually? Order date, no. In, in order, okay? So here, instead of count, I have a condition now inside this count that the order of this item, okay? The order was placed in the selected month. Okay? So anyone tried? Okay, so let, let's try. So what, what was the hard part? The, the month. Like you just want to uh, send a list of numbers. So, okay, let's do it again. It's public, action, result, okay. Number of, Okay, just let me read the question. So are we doing the same thing? Create a page where you select an item. Okay, so the first and month number, then show the number of units. Oh, we need to show the quantity this time. Sold from this item during this month. Okay, so first thing we need to show a list of months. Okay, number of items in 
item units in a month in month okay like how many how many big macs we sold in january how many pieces we sold okay not how many orders i'm i'm, I'm interested in the quantity itself okay so here what uh, i want to know in the get so first i need the list of items okay just like usual okay then i want to show a list okay view bag dot month let's call it or month okay equals new select list so here i should send a collection on i enumerable okay so what should i send Okay, I can send does, uh, does the system have daytime built in? Then you can say daytime that month. No, well Is... you you know that months are from one to twelve. Yeah. Yeah, like you, you don't need a function for that. Uh, even if there are like even if you can extract it somehow, uh, all what you need is one to twelve. Okay, like maybe there's a function in, that can help in daytime, but you don't even need to look for something like this. So a new list of integer where it's the items are one, two, three, four. Okay. And that's all what I will send. Okay, there, there's no properties like ID or something. The list itself is the property. And I want to show the numbers themselves. So that's what I need to send. Okay. Then I will return the view. Okay. Okay. So now for the HTTP post, public action result. Uh, this is a long name. Okay, so what are you going to be sending for your query? The item ID and the month, the month number. Okay, so you will be sending item ID and you will also be sending the month. Okay, same name as your view bag. Okay, now you should be able to continue from here. So how, how do you get the quantities of an item in a certain month. So this is just um, like a filter, okay? Or you can use for each with link if you think the link query is going to be extremely complicated. So let's find the item first. Item equals db dot items dot find. We found the item. Okay. So the result is db dot but or not db like we have the item dot item dot order items but not all of them 
So I want to know what I want to know the no no one did write wrote this this query. Where? Okay, those are items dot where. Okay, where what? Okay, so first I want to check the date. So order item. Oh, it's called OI. So order item dot the order dot date. Okay, dot what? The value dot month equals to what? The month. Okay. Okay, that's the first one. And okay, that, that's that's the my 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 criteria. Like I don't have an and here. Okay, like uh, I'm starting from the item, so I don't have an and. So those are all the items, uh, all all the orders in this item. So what I want to now to know, uh, let's call it orders in month. Okay, it's not the result yet. Okay, now instead of all the orders, I have a small set of orders in this month. Okay, what should I do now? I sum need to the, sum. Sum the quantity. Sum the quantity. So var result equals orders in month dot sum. So we have, we, we can, like there's a function called sum in, in Ding, okay? <clears throat> so sum the quantities that I have. Okay, so after, after only taking the orders in the current month I want, I went and issued a sum query to give me the sum of all the quantities for all those orders. Okay. Now, all what I need to do is to return the view with the results. Okay. And the rest is somehow similar, like select list for what? For the month, select list for the item. Okay, and then showing the number. So it's it's like identical to this, but instead of only item drop down list, you have another drop down list for what? For the month. Okay, and the rest is totally the same. Of course, you here we are using view bags. Here we are not using view bags. Uh yeah, well, as usual, I forgot about those. Yeah, they should be here as well. Okay. Let's see if it's uh, it's working anyway. So I don't have any dates uh, to test, but at least this. I don't know. I feel like you all uh, want me to do this one. Okay. Okay. Let's write the view. Okay, so we don't need to specify since that it's just integer and it's making all kinds of problems with null. So I'm pretty sure there is a workaround for this thing. But let's take those. Okay, so we need a place people can choose the item. Then select month, people can choose HTML dot drop down list that we called it month. Okay, you select, and then if the model is not null, if we are in the post part, okay, then I will uh, show the model. So total. 
You can write a div or a p or h3 or whatever, okay? But it's getting boring constant. Okay. Okay, now we may have issues because because all our dates are null. So like small beats uh, and those are the numbers, the months. You can create um, like you can create a simple uh, dictionary where you have a month and a number of the month, but it doesn't matter. I think class date time can um, search based on name of month. Anyways, like in number seven, uh, yeah, here we will have like I guess here, yeah, because um, our our. Um, our all our dates are nulls, okay? So this can be fixed. First, you need to check if the date is not null and then check if the month is the same or you need to go and fix your database, okay? So it's just an issue about like, I don't have any dates, okay? So here you can check maybe oi.order.date placed is not null and Okay, so just to make sure it's not null. Or you can exclude it first. Yeah, just to avoid the null values. <laughs> okay, you can exclude it in a previous where if it's making trouble. Okay, so after a um, simple break, uh, we will continue with adding loyal customers and discounts for our loyal customers. Okay, yeah, see you soon.
Okay, so let's continue with uh, our restaurant example. Okay, so what we want now is to add the loyalty attribute to our database and then starting coding this feature. Okay, so what we need to do is to go to the customer and change the design of the customer to add is loyal, okay, or is a premium uh, user or whatever. Okay, so is loyal, this is a bit. Okay, and since we already have customers, we will keep it unmandatory and uh, it will be defaulted to false, which is good because usually by default, you are not a loyal customer yet. You will be, you become one when you make three orders or more. Okay, so let's save this one. And then let's go update our ADMX. So you will notice that is loyal now is part of our customer table and our customer class. Okay. So where where is the best place to start deciding or start changing the customer from loyal to uh, from like unloyal to loyal from false to true? Where's the place? In order. Yeah. Uh, in order, where exactly in order? Uh, where the order is more than three. Yeah, but like I, I need a function, like th this is the order controller. Like is there a function where I can use for this task? Like, where, like, do you do that when you delete an order, when you edit an order, when you create an order? So when I create, when an, you create order, an order, okay. So when I create an order, okay, okay, I I'm saving that order. But here, before I save that order, or after, doesn't matter. In this place, okay, I need to check. Hey, the customer who made that order, this this the one I'm creating, the customer who made this order. Uh, is this his uh, third order? If yes, then hey, change the customer type to loyal. So every time I create an order, okay, where's the create? So this is the create, so you are saving. So you are adding the order to the orders, you are saving. So here before saving, okay, what if I like check if this is the third order or more for this customer, okay? Change uh, his status to loyal, if so, okay? So if, if while I'm creating this one, okay, I want to also check, hey, is this your second order, third order, for fourth order, okay? So I need to count how many orders this customer have already, okay? So I need something like, do I have the customer? Yeah, so I have the order actually. So var uh, number of current orders, for this customer, okay? Now, when you go to work, don't make this extremely long. Here, I'm just so you understand exactly what I'm doing. Try to find a shorter form, like two words, three words, okay? Don't make a whole line, but it's easier to understand. Okay, so how do I know? So order, 
dot customer dot orders dot count. Okay, so now I know what is the count for this order. Now, if it is more than three, now if the number of orders for this customer is more than three, okay, right? What should I do? Order dot customer dot is loyal equals true. Otherwise, it will remain false. If it's already true, then that's fine. It will be. It will remain true. Like if this is his tenth order, okay, it it will be true. Like nothing. It won't harm to make it true again. Okay. So uh, and if uh, this is not the case, if this is his first order, second order, then the is loyal will remain false. Okay, you don't need to make it false. It's already false. Now, one issue we can have is when you delete. So if you want to be very accurate, then ex suppose that you deleted this order. It wasn't delivered. So here, here it's a bit of work. So first, you need to make sure he paid for the, for the order. The order wasn't deleted. When you delete, you need to count again. So if you deleted his order and now he has less than three, you need to change his status. Okay. So if you want to be more accurate, you need to check for paying for the order, deleting the order. But for now, let's let's just um, discuss this case. Okay. It's when you become loyal, not when you are loyal and become uh, disloyal. They said. Okay. Uh, so we have a uh, deleted confirmed. Yeah, so you mean when you delete the order? Yeah, you need to check if. No, I mean, you... when you create, when we create the control, the mm -hmm. the program generate. Uh... Yeah, so you you will write it here in delete confirm. Yeah. So here you will write something similar, like if this if the orders. So okay, let's write. Uh, I just uh, don't want to make it uh, too much. Okay, so let's go to delete confirmed. So after removing, so here check if this is the third change to, to so here check if the order the customer was loyal and now he has less than three orders. Okay, so if the customer if this guy has less than three orders, make him false. Okay. Why? Because like he ordered order, then hey, don't send them, delete them. Now, this is like a flow in your program. People will become loyal just because they are ordering and canceling. Okay, so you need to be careful. Okay, so if someone is deleting his orders, okay, we need to make him false as loyalty if he has now less than three. Okay. Maybe it's uh, great, uh, less or equal than three. Uh yeah. Well, yeah. It it depends on the what the cus the the uh, what what is the question? Honestly, I forgot. Like it could be less or equal greater equal. It it depends on the what restaurant for, for the restaurant okay. wants. For yeah. this is okay, but for the other uh, is one uh, is with, here? yeah that's that's okay without yeah that's true yeah yeah because it's yeah. four now yeah honestly I always like uh, keep it as like an optional because like more than three like do you want it on the third one or after the third one it, it's not a big deal really you know like it's it's what the restaurant wants okay so this thing is something we call it uh, business logic. So it's what the business, okay, the business of the restaurant wants, and it can be easily changed. What what's what's um, critical here is the database and the code, okay. And of course, like uh, sometimes I don't even think about it. What I do is I make an example. I try to do it, and then hey, uh, we maybe we need an equal here, or maybe we need greater than. So when you test it, you will for sure see what's going on. 
Okay. So we made the is loyal for a reason. Okay, there's a reason why we are making people uh, loyal here. So loyal customers, they always get 20% discount on their total cost. Okay, so after the third uh, order, you always have 20% discount. Okay, so that's something we need to add. So where, where should I add this? Where should I implement this feature? Total cost. Okay, so in the total cost, in the order itself, we wrote a function for total cost. Now it's time to enhance this one. Oh, well, that's a lot of code. Okay, calculate total cost. So if the order is not null, we calculate it. Now, before you return, what should you do? Or, or where, where do you check if the customer is loyal or not? Like after you calculate the after you calculate the total cost, so here you have two cases. If the order dot customer dot is a loyal customer, okay, what should we do? Return result what multiplied by zero point eight. Zero point eight, and here, what's the problem here? Cannot from bool ah uh, yeah it gets uh, okay let me remember that maybe like equals true and that's all you do or not null and that's all you do. Uh, yeah, well, it's complaining about, yeah, uh, just, can I have a second here? That's why we just, if loyal is equal to true. Uh, just equals equals true? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Well, the, 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 the reason is we are comparing, comparing bool question mark. So a boolean that can be null with a boolean. Okay, so that's how we solve it. Okay, that's great. Okay, so yeah, well, what's the difference here? So what? Oh yeah, so you, okay, yeah. So usually in a boolean you have true or false. Okay, that's why you can use is loyal right away because it will be, that means it's true. Now the problem is now with a bool question marks, question mark, now you have three options. You have true, false, and null. So, so now your code is not able to know, okay, do you mean true or null? So you need to say equals equals true. Okay, yeah. So did you search for that or did you find it yourself? Uh, uh, yeah. I, I I'm using all, all the time the tool. I ah, know you, you write it, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I used to write it for years. It makes, it made me feel safe for some yeah. reason. Me yeah, too. you know, you, you feel like you are very sure now. It's always true. It's not like yeah. false. Maybe it's more rather than I'm not sure. Yeah. So this will solve it actually, because now, but be careful now, is loyal could be true, false, and null, okay? Uh, it's not nice to know the reason of those small things, yeah. Okay, otherwise, else, what should you return? Return result as is. Okay, else the customer isn't loyal, so let's just return the result as is. Okay. Now, the last thing we have is the receipt thing. It's like, you know, when you order from any restaurant, they will give you a full report. Like, first your name, then the order number, then, hey, you have those items like Big Mac, three, and that was their cost. Uh, pizza, two, and that's their cost. This is the total cost before discount. And if you are loyal, here's your discount. Like a full report, a full report of all your order, all the receipt. So we need to make this like a nice full page. Now we have all the information. Okay? It's not like um, we are not even choosing anything here selecting okay 
or maybe you can select the order and then show the full report okay full receipt of this order who was the customer what is the date you ordered is it for pickup what's the total cost what are the items so that's what i need you to work on for today and we will uh, start with it tomorrow okay so a full full receipt page where you have all the information about the order okay and the more detailed you can make it the nicer it will be okay like calculate the price of each item okay and then calculate the total one then show the discount okay so it's just a matter of showing the information i really hope that you uh, liked today's lesson there were nothing new but uh, we tried to solve those questions together and um, maybe you are not saying we are getting closer to writing like meaningful solutions where we are discussing the business where we are trying to find the correct algorithms and places so we are getting closer to the feel and look of a real solution where we are handling some issues here some issues there okay so it's a start for us making bigger and better solutions okay any question okay see you tomorrow okay tomorrow morning there's also uh, interviews so we'll start with the lab as well then i'll see you after that okay yeah see you bye thank you Jay. uh Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, Jennifer, go, go. Oh, no, I just said this was good. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm glad you and, liked it. And, uh, oh, what was that? So you tomorrow... want to say it's good too? Yeah, thank you very much, Taya. Okay, see you tomorrow. <laughs> that okay. too. And um, um, so tomorrow we are going to have something to do for like assignment. Yeah, so tomorrow we have, uh, first we'll solve this one or we'll see okay. what you have. Then right. we'll learn um, like a quick thing about something called include. Okay. Then we will see the project, the project for this course, we will explain it and you will you will start working on it. Okay, so tomorrow okay. is the last day. There will, no, uh, there will be no exam. We will just mm -hmm. take the exam. Next week, uh, we will have a very lightweight and like very fun course. It's called math, oh. math for computers or for computing math something. i'm yeah. really bad at math yeah yeah that, that's that's the thing so it was pure math before so i changed that so now we will uh, learn windows forms okay windows forms is like desktop applications you see like uh, visual studio here visual studio is a desktop application it's not a web application so we will learn how to create desktop applications and we will create something similar to the calculator okay so this will be our math thing. So we will talk about binary numbers, hexadecimal numbers. We will create an application just like this one. Okay. And maybe better. Like I will show you some pictures. I I hope I still have them or I can request them. Uh, once you did Dolphin, who you thought was the teacher, he made one maybe better than the Windows one. Like uh, he, he requested a month. Okay, and he made a crazy one like that, but the colors were horrible. Anyways, uh, we will learn how to make desktop applications and work with um, some lightweight math. Okay, so it will be more programming than math because I hate math, you hate math, everyone hates math. I have a question. Sure. So uh, in this program, we have any subject about mobile application? Uh, no. Like summary or something no. like that? Um, no, we maybe we can talk maybe in a class for an hour or two. What are the technologies? But no, we don't have it. We don't have time for it. Okay. But we can talk if you want. Uh, we can talk about uh, the uh, technologies in .NET. So how can you use C Sharp and .NET to create mobile applications that can work on Android and on iOS and on Windows phones? Summary is part of uh, yeah. .NET. So, uh, so it will be about Xamarin mainly, okay. but uh, we won't study it as a course. Maybe we can create the, this uh, ca uh, calculator in, in Xamarin. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's really very complicated to be finished. Like okay. we, we'll talk about desktop applications for a day or two. You will see how very easy it is to create like desktop application. 
Uh, when mobile, if we are using mobile, that would take more than a week for sure. Okay. And this is a very simple short course. It's like just to relax a bit. Okay, so uh, making it mobile will make it actually more complicated than than web. Okay, yeah. So see you tomorrow, guys. Bye.